Mommy's in a hurry. I need you to put your shirt on. Matthew. Thank you. Jeff! Sorry. Cookie had to milk the cow again. Lost track of time. Come here, baby. Oh, good girl. Mm. Morning, Jeff. Morning. <laughs> well, it's not rare beefsteaks, but you should eat your breakfast anyway, Jeff. Morning. Morning, Scotty. For what we are about to receive, Lord, we are grateful. Amen. 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 We might as well slow down. It's not like they can start without you. It sets a bad example to the students if the teacher's late. Cookie, would you please? Oh, yeah. Come on here, you little sweet baby. Now? We're not in a hurry as well. We're gonna move those cows to that creek on the south side. Coming. All right now, Maddie, you listen to Cookie, all right? Yes, sir. Mind him. Take a nap and he tells you to. Stay out of trouble. Bye-bye. Picking flowers, just having a good old time. See you down the Oh, what's the matter? Did I forget something? No. I just wanted to let you know that I have a nice day. Have a nice day. Well, thank you. Same to you. Now, what is it you really wanted to say, Mr. LeHay? I hate that we need the money from your teaching job. But between the drought and the cattle plague, the herd's much smaller than it should be. Well, only the good Lord knows how big our herd should be. Let's let our faith rest in him. You're right. I know I am. <laughs> Now I better get going or Tetsford Junction's gonna start looking for a new teacher. I love you. <laughs> Have a nice 
nice day. I'll meet you there in a little bit. All right. All right. Afternoon, Mr. LaHaye. Hey, Doros. Abel. What brings you out my way? Always cut to the chase, don't you? Uh, it usually suits me best, Sam. That's why we came to see this man, Abel. Always directly to the point and honest to a fault. Well, I don't think you rode all the way out here just to pay me a compliment. It's official business, Willie. We need a sheriff from Tetra Junction. Well, if you hear from my official position on the matter, I'd have to say I agree with you. I'm here to offer you the job. Well, I'm no low, Mandoros. Hear me out, Willie. This job doesn't come without its uh, share of bonuses. You get a good, steady paycheck. Why me? Because people like you. And you could be persuasive keeping the peace. Get the job done. I appreciate it, but not interested. <laughs> See, I got my hands full looking after my herd until we take them to market. Well, I will be hiring a sheriff, Willie. And I'd like for that job to go to a man with integrity like yourself. You know, that way you could help your family and the town. Just think about it, Willie. I have a surprise for you today, boys and girls. Someone has donated brand new readers for our whole class. Yes, Annie. Are they for our very own to keep? Everyone will get their very own copy to borrow for the rest of the year. Would you like to help me pass them out? There you go. It's right over there. Now. I'd like for you to open up your readers and write your name on the inside cover. Use pencil and use your best penmanship. Mrs. LaHaye? Yes. My reader's already got a name in it. It says Samuel H. Doros. That's because it was Mayor Doros who donated these readers. Without his generosity, we wouldn't have these new books. All right, class. I would like to start with our penmanship. <clears throat> Now, let's begin. Turn to page three. Should be any minute now. Look who's up from her nap. Oh. Miss Kathy never wants to miss the phone, isn't that right? Now, I want you two to be on your best behavior. Just because we live in the Wild West does not mean that we have to act like it. I see him! I see him! Oh, he's here! He's here! <laughs> Sweetheart. Ah, ah, are you here? Oh, you're fine. 
finally here. I'm here. I'm here, sweetheart. Oh, you beautiful son for these eyes. I promised your mother I would memorize this very moment. Oh, Pa, I can't tell you how much I've missed you. Mama and the boys are fine. And they wish they were here. The cost of the trip was just too much for all of us. I wish they could have come too, but I am so glad that you didn't wait any longer. My mother and I agreed that the timing was right for me to make the journey. And we know God's hand was in it suddenly. Everything just found a place, and I'm here with you, my baby, no. my angel. I missed you so much. Oh, come meet all your grandchildren that I've been writing to you about all these years. Yeah, you are still so beautiful. Hey, Grandpa. Hey. Hey. This is Maddie. Stagecoach was rough. I think I'll walk back, to tell you the truth. <laughs> well, Kathy's down for the night. It sounds like she gave up without a fight. Oh, she's worn out from all the excitement of meeting her grandpa today. Well, it's been pretty exciting for me, too. Marty and I have been very grateful to get to know all of you from Missy's letters. But it's so nice to finally be able to put the faces with the names. All of us being apart has been hard. And I know you've had some hard times, but God's with us. It's been a tough couple of years for all the ranchers in the area. Little or no rain made the grazing scarce, and then the cattle plague swept through the valley. Thankfully, we have my teaching job to help make ends meet. We're just looking to hold out till we can drive the herd to the market in springtime. Pray for a big payday. Catch up on things. I'll pray for that myself. In the meantime, I'm just thankful to be here. How do you always manage to skedaddle before you're finished getting dressed? Come here. Stir it around. I might take your paw and show him the herd this morning. Not before I see that baby granddaughter of mine. Rosy cheeks. I'll go get Kathy up. It's a rare thing she sleeps in this late. Morning. Morning. Willie! Willie! What's wrong? She's not breathing. Kathy. Willie! She's not breathing. Kathy? <laughs> Kathy! <laughs> Jeff, get oh, out! Kathy! <laughs> consumes us. Emotions betray us. Somehow, Lord, let us rest in your promise. Your promise that Kathy is safe in your arms. Safe in heaven, where there are no tears, no pain, no sudden death. Only joy and peace and love. Lord, please be with Missy and Willie and their family. Walk with them in their grief. Hold them up when they falter. Sustain them when they feel like giving up.
could fix dinner for me this week. Take good care of Kathy, sonny. Don't let her be scared or nothing. She's little and she could be awfully lonesome. Thinking that she's missing out on all the... Sorry about your little sister. I'm afraid I don't know what to say. Me neither. I'm sorry. Please accept my condolences, Mr. Davis. It is such a tragedy. I am sorry. Thank you. Hello, sweetheart. Uh, Mr. Davis, this is my daughter, Colette. Colette, this is Mr. Clark Davis, Mrs. LaHaye's father and little Kathy's grandfather. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It's awful. Thank you. <clears throat> Colette is, uh, she's on break. She's been refining her ways at the Millington Finishing School back east. Very good. You know how it is with daughters. They sure can break their father's hearts. In more ways than one. which is right. Good. Strange. How in an instant everything can change. Makes a man unsure about anything and everything. <clears throat> Tough times all over. Gotta say, you hired me a few years back. I was working as a ham for you. It might be easier on the nerves than having my own spread. Now that I'm married and Linda's expecting, I realize how much is at stake, how bad I want it to work out. I put her to sleep, just like always. And then I checked on her right before I went to sleep, and she was fine. And in the morning, I, I went to get her up, and she, she wasn't, she wasn't breathing. I just want her safe. I'm protected. Missy. I'll be fine. 
I'll be fine. That was a beautiful service, Henry. Thank you. Perhaps you should have stuck to your previous vocation, judging by those glorious words you spoke. You know God a lot better than you know cattle. She knew. Gift to my wife from her father. Fine gift. Don't you remember? We told you she's with the angels. In heaven? Yes, sweetheart. Why? I don't know. Morning. Morning, Missy. Is Maddie asleep? Yes. What are you doing? It's a school day. I'm getting an early start for once. Jeff, will you get my horse? Missy. It's too soon. Jeff, get my horse. go back to teaching quite yet. Yeah. Look, this is not my choice. We need to work. We need the money. Cookie, will you keep a close eye on Maddie for me today? Yes, ma'am. Will you please move her cradle and the rest of her things up into the barn? I'll see you later. Helps me think things through while I get my work done. Moby Dick? I think it's the best thing Melville's ever written. Yes, Ishmael and his whaling voyage. As far as authors go, I prefer Dickens. I'm halfway through Great Expectations. So the evening mists were rising now, and in all the broad expanse of tranquil light they showed to me, I saw no shadow of another parting from her last few lines of the book. Didn't mean to spoil the ending for you. You should keep reading, though. You shouldn't run full out like that. There's wheel ruts and prairie dog holes. Oh, you shouldn't worry about me. I'm a very accomplished writer. I was worried about him. How's your father and mother? Oh, they're... They're not my parents. They're not? No, the LaHays adopted me when I was 11, right after my older brother, Sonny, died. I'm so sorry. Uh, <clears throat> this horse... looks familiar. Mm. 
Isn't he beautiful? My father just bought him for me. Will you be ready for an adventure tomorrow? What? Oh. Yeah, probably. Good. See ya. Sissa, hey. Oh, what? You didn't get my picture. Oh, I'm sorry. That's lovely. To the little girl going up to heaven. I'm done teaching. I tried to do it today and I just couldn't. We'll be just fine. Well, we might, we might not. I just know I can't go back. Mabel. Slow, hey. Willie? Came about the sheriff position if the offer's still on the table. The offer still stands. Come on in. Talk about the particulars. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O oh God. Pa! Mm. Hey, little man. Pa, you're squeezing me.
Cookie left some supper on the stove for you. Mayor Doris offered me a job today. What kind of job? They're needing a the sheriff. We didn't discuss it. Well, we need the money. Keep the ranch going. Well, who's going to run the ranch? Scotty. Missy, your finger's bleeding. I didn't feel a thing. William LaHaye, as sheriff of Tetford Junction, your duties will be wide and varied. Not limited to, but including keeping the peace, executing court orders and warrants, seizure of debtor's property when liens are due, serving papers and posting notices when called for. Do you promise on your honor, as your word is your bond and the Bible is your conscience, to uphold these duties? I do. As mayor of Tetford Junction, I declare you duly sworn in. Congratulations, Sheriff LaHaye. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hello. You look like someone who could use a little adventure. Do I? Come on, come with me. Uh, I can. I've got a job to finish here. Do it later. A man just doesn't up and quit in the middle of a job. A man is the master of his own day, his own hours, makes up his own mind. Come on. Cookie, you got some grub I can take out to Scotty and Jeff? I'm working on it as we speak. Maddie down for his nap? Yes, sir. How's she doing? Well, sir, she won't eat, and she won't come out of that room. It's like she just... It's like she just stopped. It's like she just stopped. Why don't we try to give her some of your soup? It smells so good. Oh, yes. Missy? I've been praying. God to give you comfort. Brought something for you to eat. I can't. Please, you gotta try. Even if you don't feel hungry. Please, Paul, just leave me alone. I can't do that, darling. I love you too much. up that crook Doros. Why don't you put the gun down? We'll talk about that. Talking don't save a man's land. 
Bullets are the ticket. Come on, Joe. I got some coffee in my office. And we can straighten this out. Get to the bottom of what's troubling you. Duros is at the bottom of it. Samuel, sell me down the river, Doros! Listen, Joe. Joe. You don't want to give your plan away like this. It took my family. Hey. You gonna help me, Lay? Yeah. I'm gonna help you inside. Some coffee. Good long nap. It's all right. You got one bad man left in town, Willie. Soup's getting cold. Stubborn. Yep. Must be hundreds. My mother had them shipped over from her home in Boston. Father always said she lived and breathed books. The complete works of William Shakespeare. Oh, have you read much Shakespeare? Missy had me read Romeo and Juliet. So romantic, isn't it? Well, I read it a few years ago, and at the time I was more interested in the poison and the dagger. Well, perhaps if you read it now, you would be more interested in the romance. Maybe so. If you read it now, you would see that though they're young, they both knew their own hearts. They knew that theirs was true love. You can borrow it if you would like. Really? I don't see why not. I mean, I'm gonna see you again, aren't I? I'm afraid that some of those are too fragile to be let out. Jeff and I were just out riding, and I wanted to show him the library. It's. It's like nothing I've ever seen. Well, as you can see, this is also my office. I have work to attend to. Oh, Father, there are just a few more titles I'd like to show Jeff. Well, I'm afraid it's going to have to wait, Colette. But, Father. It's fine. Your father's a busy man. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Sorry about that. My father is not usually so rude. Don't worry about it. I'll bring you the book next time I see you, okay? No. Better not. Might upset your father. I have been upsetting my father since I was old enough to tell him what dress I wanted to wear. You sound like a girl who likes to be contrary. I'm a woman who knows what she wants. And what would that be? I'd like to spend more time with you. Uh, unless you don't want to. I, I'm sorry if I'm coming off like a spoiled brat. I No. No, I like that. Colette? Please, sweetheart. Come on in. Have a seat. So are you in the habit of uh, spending your time with strange young men? He's hardly a strange young man, Father. I met him with you at the LaHaye's ranch. Have you been spending time with them ever since? I've seen him a couple of times. Is being at home so tedious to where you have to spend your time with the likes of him? You just have to give him a chance. He knows books and ranching and horses. You'll like him once you get to know him. Well, that's hardly something that's likely to happen, baby. 
because you'll be going back to school and he'll be going back to doing whatever it is that he does. I didn't mean to wake you. You didn't. Just like you thinking. Willie. Have you been able to cry ever since Cass? Sheriff, Mr. Doro's been expecting you. Boys. Sheriff LaHaye. Hope brought your appetite. Pull up a seat. All right. Thanks. Anita, si. must be no por favor. Si, senor. I may have some pressing issues that uh, will need your attention shortly. Seems that Henry and Melinda Klein have me between a, uh, shall we say, a rock and a hard place. Well, Henry and Melinda are good friends of mine. I'm sure they're good people. But they got to pay their debts just like everybody else. They had a bad spell last year. I borrowed a lot of money from me, using his land and his livestock as collateral. They've missed several payments. How much does he owe? Enough. He needs to pay me, or you need to remove him from the premises. Like Joe Paxson? I know about that ruckus with him in town. Drunken fool. The man lost everything. He even had to send his wife and daughter away because he couldn't provide for them. You know, when I was a boy, I can remember going for days without anything in my stomach. And when I did have a meal, see, I couldn't even enjoy it because I was too busy worrying about where my next meal would come from. All because I had a father that was weak. He built everything up, only to let someone come in and take it from me. I'm not my father, Lay. You're sitting in the biggest house for 100 miles. You know, the gap between me and chance of poverty will never be big enough to suit me. And if it means tossing people like Paxson off his land, then so be it. And I refuse to let life take a sucker punch at me. See, we all make choices, Lay. You know, take you, for instance. You made the choice to become sheriff, keep food on your table for your family. Now, Paxson, he chose to raise cattle ended up on another man's table. What? Oh, yeah. 
When you get back to the jail, you can thank Joe Paxson for that steak. Lunch was on him. Gotta get back to town. Oh, Sheriff. Aren't you forgetting something? Now, those papers, they give me the legal rights to claim Henry Klein's property if he should default. If he's got the money to pay me, well, that's fine. If not, then you do your job, Sheriff, and you give him notice. Seven days, and they vacate the premises, leaving all their possessions, including livestock, behind. You tell Dora, so I'll pay him when I drive the cows to market. That's still a month away. Listen, the loan contract says you gotta pay him something now. You need to make at least one payment. Maybe something you could sell. I sold everything that's not tied down. And you know, Melinda's expected. Why didn't you tell me things were so bad for you? I guess I was praying for a miracle. Doros will force this issue, Henry. He'll take your land. Or for my cold, dead body. That kind of talk won't do your family any good. The law says you've got seven days, or else I have to remove you from your property. Up and out early. Whew. I tell you, Scotty, he sure is one tough old man. He's keeping me busier than a farmer with a broke plow on a lame horse. Whew. You all right? I'm trying to be, Paul. Most times it just. I feel like there's a dark cloud hanging over us. I can't get out from under. Just nagging doubts and shaken faith. I feel like, like Willie and I are pulling apart. Losing a child, that's the hardest pain any parent can go through. You just have to make sure that you don't let that dark cloud overstay its welcome. Steal your joy, make you bitter. It'll whisper lies, disguise its truth. It will attempt to divide you from those that you love. You know that you and Willie are both welcome back home if you decide not to stay. We will do everything in our power to make sure you get a fresh start. Thank you, Paul. Hey, you two have been working so hard to make sure everything else gets done. I guess that's it. Will you know where he is? What do you mean? I'm saying it might be high time that you went to visit your husband. The sheriff? Now you go freshen up. And I'll saddle your horse, okay, Don? Can't stop, Clit.
How can I help? Want him with a hammer and a nail? Cozy. They're together right now. He's gonna regret that. Intruding. If this is a bad time to visit, I can no, go back. No, no. It's really nice to see you, Melinda. Please come in. I'm sorry I haven't stopped by until now. I've been an awful friend. Oh, no. No, please don't say that. To be honest, I don't think I could have dealt with the company before. How are you and Henry? And the baby. Fine. Except for, you know, the ranch. But... The ranch? Willie hasn't told you? No, I don't really see Willie that much nowadays. Not since he's been working as sheriff. Did you know that? Hmm. He came by the other day. What happened, Melinda? Henry owes Sam Dora some money, and he sent Willie to come by to collect. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Melinda. Last year after the drought, um, Doros paid Henry a visit, and he made it seem like he wanted to help Henry get back on track. And like everybody, we were hurting financially, so we took him up on his offer. And now we're behind on our payments, and, uh, and since Willie is sheriff, he's the one who has to force us from our land. Willie won't do that. Sheriff doesn't have a choice. What happens to Henry and Melinda if they don't pay Doros on time? Doros will foreclose on their ranch just like he'd done at Joe Pags and probably others. I know this is awful for you. I've been thinking about going back to teaching. Oh. If I go back, then you wouldn't have to do this and be in this situation. You can't go back to teaching, Miss. Yes, no. I can. I can no. reopen the... Not now, please. Why? I don't understand. I can't explain it. I just need to know you're here, safe. I'll stay, Willie. I'll stay. Have you been praying for his help? I can't seem to. Maybe we should try praying together. What exactly would we be praying for, Missy? The only thing we both want, we won't ever see again. <laughs> I'm 
man, please. Don't let this be happening. As you can see, Mr. Taylorson, everything I brought with me is of the finest quality. I'm sorry, Mrs. LeHay, but $13 is all I can do. It still leaves me $2 short of what I need. Well, that's entirely up to you. But if it's worth two dollars to you, talk to you. Let a moonlight stroll. I was hoping you'd say that. I'm glad you can make it, Sheriff. We both think we're standing on our own land. Henry, you knew this day was coming. You should have packed something, gotten your goods together so we couldn't have them. I'm not going anywhere. Come on, is this going to take all day? I know you're just doing your job, Willie. Seems that me and Klein have come to an impasse. You're too full of yourself to realize that the user you are is indeed being used. To the grave you'll be dragged by the seducer of your greed. And when you're an old man, you'll live off the memory of your usury and your escapades. Too full of pride to admit you're nothing. 
in an empty shell. I know men like you, despise and reproof. Not that you were made that way, but you rejected what you were made for. Here, Doros. Here's enough to keep us on our land. Gives you another 30 days. Oh, and by the way, I used to be a good pastor, but now I'm a rancher. So why don't you get off my land? 30 days. Ladies. had to do it, Missy. I know. Will you ride home with me? I've got to get back to town. Clint, is that you? Hello, Father. Hey, where you been? Just out riding. By yourself? I'm gonna be surrounded by girls at school in a few days, so I don't mind the solitude. I see. Well, if that's all, I'm gonna go change. Well, there is one more thing. It's a matter of conscience. I had a change of heart about that uh, new horse I got you. You mean the one you took from the Kleins? Yeah, it's been, uh, been on my mind for the last couple of days. I think the only right thing to do is to give it back. <laughs> Father, that's wonderful. Just find myself in a bit of a bind as exactly how to do that. Just give it back. I am a businessman, and I have a reputation, Colette. Can't appear soft or indecisive. I think the best way to handle this situation is that if you were to give the horse to that friend of yours, Jeff LaHaye, and, well, have him return it to the clients. One more thing. I'd rather nobody knew it was my idea. I won't tell. Thank you, Father. You're doing the right thing. Missy. Come on out of the rain now. You're gonna get pneumonia. 
Come on now. Come on inside. Let's go. Oh no. Come on. Come oh, on. Now. No, but let me Come go. On. You gotta go inside. What's this about? Please let me go. I can feel it. It's the rain, it's the drops. I can feel it for the first time. Missy, oh. I didn't know you were coming into town today. I'm a little surprised myself. Is it all right? Um, yeah, it's, it's fine. Looks good. It's just leftover ham. How's Maddie? Keep him cookie on his toes. That's good. time that we had her, we thank you for all the days of our lives that we will miss her. We ask that your love helps ease the ache in our hearts. Amen. Come say goodbye. It's only goodbye for a little while. I'm gonna miss you. I'll miss you too. Oh, I brought you something. Oh, but I don't. It's two things actually, but they're not gifts in the traditional sense because you can't keep them. Here. Oh, Colette, I can't take this. Please take it. Read Romeo and Juliet again for me. Thank you. Oh, here. I 
want you to take my horse and give it back to Mrs. Klein. But Colette, your father... My father gave me this horse. Now I want to give it back. I should go. I'll give you a leg up. Dress. Shakespeare does. Like we got it's a horse thief. Let's go get him, boys. tells me he caught you stealing one of our horses, red-handed. Like I told him, Colette gave me the horse to return it to the clients. This must have been a conspiracy that you made up with the clients. I mean, them being as good of friends to your family and all. Henry and Melinda don't know anything about this. Listen to me, son. I can't help you unless you get honest with me. You don't know what we do to horse thieves. We're going to handle this one by the books. I'm taking you into town. That sheriff ain't gonna do nothing to one of his own. William LaHaye is a man of the law. And uh, I don't have any doubt. He'll do the right thing. Now get this trash out of my house. Sonny. 
Jeff. Well, I got another prisoner for you, Sheriff. You need to lock him up until the federal marshal arrives. Get your hand off my boy. My men, they caught him dead to rights on a stolen horse. Oh, it's true enough. I'm an eyewitness along with my men. And the last I heard, horse thieves, they get the noose around these parts. But I might be willing to drop the charges as long as he leaves and never returns. Just slow down, Doros. I mean, there's, there's got to be some kind of misunderstanding. <laughs> no, there's no misunderstanding. I mean, the boy, he took my horse. That's my property. You both would swear to that in front of a judge? On a stack of Bibles. You gonna take my boy away from me? I'd send my own daughter to jail if I knew she was a thief. You can't let something like family interfere with the law, LaHaye. You know, Doris, for once I agree with you. stage myself. Oh, I stopped the stage. I can, you know. When I happened to see the horse in my corral, I asked Jeff about it. He told me Colette wanted to give the horse back to the clients. See, I knew a snake like you just might be up to something. Something that might get my boy into trouble. So I went after Colette as a witness, just in case there was any kind of misunderstanding. It's like I make a better sheriff than even I knew. I honestly think you could get my daughter to testify against me. Colette. It's like you said, Father. You can't let something like family get in the way of the law. What? These are my terms. It's one of my favorite dresses on you. Thank you. I think you forgot something. Turn around. Well, you stopped wearing the locket about the time Henry and Melinda came up with the money for Doros. I just figured it out. You didn't tell Henry or Melinda? No. No, that's still your secret. How did you get it? We don't have any money. Got my first paycheck. Couldn't think of anything else we needed more. Thank you. Thank you for getting it back. Party. Yeah, lots of happy folks. Yes, you batter that chicken up with some nice cayenne pepper oh, and boy, it makes it nice and special. Hey, you nice boys, too. you get out of here. You come around here stealing all of my chicken, you watch that old fox in a hen house. You're gonna come around here getting the best part of my chicken, too. Excuse me. Mr. Paxton. Can I get you anything? Well, I'd say you and your husband have done plenty for me, ma'am. I'm back at my ranch. 
Oh, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, I uh, telegraphed my wife and daughter, told them we got a roof back over our heads again, and uh, got a message back saying they're coming home. That is so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Sure. I'll tell you what, it's gonna take me a month of Sundays when I get home for me to tell your mother about the trip. Oh, well, you could make plans to stay and make some more memories. Oh, there'll be future visits, I promise you that. And in the meantime, I seem to recall that I taught my little girl how to dance once upon a time. <laughs> Take care of yourself, son. Come here, you. Oh, my goodness, you're getting big. You mind your folks. Okay. Love you. I love you too, Grandpa. Thank you for all the help. It made a huge difference in all of us in a bad way. I seem to recall you doing it for me once. You have a safe trip. You too, sir. Say hi to Marty for me. I will. Give Mom a big hug for me. I will. And Arnie. And Aaron. Oh, I will. Oh, I'm so thankful that you were here with us, Paul. I don't know what we would have done without you. Well, no mistakes, Missy. God's timing is always perfect. Even if we don't realize it at the time. Come here. I don't want to let go. You keep those cards and letters coming here. Especially now that I can place those beautiful faces with the names. I love you, sweetheart. More than anything in the world. I love you too, Bob. Bye. Bye.